So I've played Pokemon Scarlet and Violet a few times, and it seems that people seem to be enjoying these runs. Thank you. But I'm at a point where I want to spice things up to the next level, and what better way to do that than to randomize the game? This means that the Pokemon we see in the wild and the trainers we face will all have randomized Pokemon. And of course, hardcore Nuzlocke rules will apply, and trust me when I say crazy things happen in this run. Now, as we are randomizing the game, I also decided to randomize the trainer. Ah, uh, there we go. You'll fit right in, buddy. First things first, we need a speed run through the start of the game. We get up from our desk, let Director Clavel get in to hit on my mum, get ready for school, walk some Pokemon, and meet our neighbour, Nimona. For some reason, our starters didn't randomise. I'm not sure why, but for whatever reason, these things wouldn't change. But the moment we're free from the clutches of Nimona's tutorials, we can confirm that the game has successfully randomised. After a short time of exploring, Iron Thorns is the lucky one that joins the team. And let's just say that there was no shortage of this Paradox Pokemon to pick from. Karada needs my mum's sandwich, and after seeing how this thing responds, I kinda wish I ate it for myself. We finally get a taste of battle, and Ivan pulls no punches, bringing out a fully evolved Dush Bun. Although all it takes is a few thunder fangs from Reptar, giving us our first win. Before we take on Nimona at the gate, we can get our hands on another Pokemon. See, Titan is the newest addition to the team, and I'm kinda excited to use this giant ice ball. This also happened. Yeah, I may have bought some Poke Dolls after that. Nimona stopped us at the entrance of the academy, and her team is not randomized. Great. Her pathetic Pokemon are beaten up, and then I fix the randomizer as I want the boss battles to be randomized. As no one cares about the school academy stuff, we skip right through that. Also, it seems that Reptar is sick of walking and wants to jump on Coridon for a lift. Yeah, at your weight, I don't think that's happening, buddy. Now we can leave the school, with Katie and her bugs being the first thing I want to take out. But before that, there are a couple of encounters that I can grab. Okay, so only in a randomizer will you see Colossals and a Bomber Snows chilling together in the rain at a farm. So this is just a, a breeding ground for, for water Pokemon, huh? Because I've used Quaxley before, Finizen is a Pokemon we can get, and honestly, I can't wait for this dolphin to evolve. Next, we find Arceus with a bunch of chi use. Surely he's not going to notice if I take one of his pet fishes, right? All right, let's get out of here. Hold up. You're watching this and you haven't subscribed? I mean, how are you going to say no to this little guy, huh? With a team of four, we confidently head to the gym to take on Katie. She tosses out a Venonat, which makes me happy, as I know that the game has randomized the bosses. Nemo terrestrializes, and a single ember from our fish takes it out. Katie then sends in a cleavor, which does not make me happy, as this thing can literally slice down trees whole with its giant stone axe arms. Also, it's a rock type, so Nemo doesn't exactly match up well against it. Reptor comes in, and Cleaver gets us low on health after a couple of big bug bites, while we bring it down low with back-to-back -back thunder fangs. Nemo comes back in, eating a bug bite well, before embering this Cleaver straight back to Legends Arceus. Funny enough, her ace is a Nimble, who is normally the lead in this fight. Okay, quickly, you'll probably notice that although her team was randomized, they were all still bug types. That's because the game was randomized for boss trainers to keep their typings, although some were kinda off. Okay, back to the video. See ya, buddy. We get our hands on the first gym badge, and now we have the Titan Pokemon on our mind. Before I can take on the giant crab made of rock, we add a Flogato to the team, which is the only starter Pokemon I haven't used yet in a run. Clawth, the Stony Cliff Titan, is no longer safe as we hunt it down. Flipper just terrestrializes, and in both phases, a few water guns from our dolphin is all this crab can handle before being taken out. Apparently, Ivan has a Dondonzo, but that's definitely a shoulder I see. Speaking of Arvin, this guy gives us a pretty useless badge for helping him out, but we take it and move on to Artisan City. The gym leader here is Brassius, and this guy apparently hangs out on top of windmills. He starts a gym battle, and it's a, a, a Tatsugiri. Yeah, so th that's a water dragon type, so I'm not sure what happened here. Slash was in the lead, but I tag in Tom as Tatsugiri still uses grass moves. A few leafages from our boy Tom, and this piece of sushi goes down. Brassy's next Pokemon is Farigarath, and I'm starting to think that maybe Katie's full team of bugs was just a fluke. Thankfully, Tom can handle himself, and he takes it out with a few bites. Finally, Brassius stays true to his roots and brings in a grass Pokemon, Grookey. Too bad that a terrestrialized eye shot from Slushy is all it takes to end this poor monkey's life. Brassius is beaten, and now we have doubled our gym badge collection. We hear there's a giant bird causing havoc, dropping boulders all over the place, so being the good Samaritan that I am, we go to handle the situation. We reach the peak and we find the culprit, Bombardier. 
Repto makes light work of this oversized stalk, and of course, Ivan shows his face just in time to get his hands on those herbs he's been looking for. But because he's doing it for his mobostiff, who is sick, I let it slide. Team Sarah are officially on my radar, and Giacomo is first on the list to be dealt with. On the way there, we can add another team member, Chen Pao. Although, the moment I come across a fighting type Pokemon, I'll be in some serious trouble. We bust through the gates and we raid the base, forcing Giacomo to come out. And he brings in a Pornard. Not sure what happened here. We beat it up, along with his star mobile, and the first dead into Team Star has been made. Right, I, I think this guy's lost. I'm pretty sure you're from another game, buddy. Before we can take on Namona and the third gym leader, Iono, I add another team member who, surprise, surprise, is weak to fighting. Time for Namona. She leads with Spidops, who somehow survives a stab rock tomb from Reptar. A bug bite tickles us while we take it out on the next turn. Waltz is next, and this thing had no chance living a Thunder Fang from Reptar. Her final Pokemon is Annihilate, but this stupid monkey keeps going for yawns, allowing Reptar to bring it down to the red, before Flipper switches in and gets a kill with a water gun thanks to its Fire-type Terror. Now it's Iono's turn to face defeat, so I head down to the gym to take her on. Pinchurchin is her lead, and all it takes is a few Rock Tombs from Reptar to take it out. Iono also has an Annihilate in her ranks, but this thing has no fighting moves, so a few terrestrialized Thunderfangs gets the kill. Things start to get serious as Iona brings in her own Chen Pao, who does decent damage with a bite, while surviving a Fire Fang. Not taking any risks, Nemo tags in, taking decent damage from a bite, and then brought into the orange with a spark, before finally eliminating the threat. Her axe is a, 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 cap, a capsa kid. Okay, cool. Now give me that badge, please. Things are looking good, and although we have Mela up next, I make a quick detour as I can add another Pokemon, Artibax. Don't get me wrong, I love the fact that I can use a Baxcalibur, but Eerie must be licking her lips right about now. Mela's base is easily raided, and she comes out on top of her car, and we can start the battle. She brings out Typhlosion, but Jack is the perfect counter, as a couple of terrestrialized rock tombs take out the Fire Mole. Her star mobile is a little bit more bulky, so Jack chips away at it before attacking Reptar to deliver the final blow. Mela and her giant boots have been beaten, and slowly Team Star are starting to crumble. Now it's a lurking still titan, but this thing is literally incinerated to death from Nemo, not once, but twice in a matter of minutes. Arvon is happy about this, and now we have slayed three of the Titan Pokemon. Kaskarafa is our next destination, and we happen to find a gold duck having a nice stroll on thin air in the middle of a sandstorm. And to be honest, I'm not actually sure if this is from the randomizer or just a glitch in the actual game. Oh, it, it's just a Hooper Unbound having a nice stroll in the desert. I'm going to leave that alone. Before we actually take on Kofu, I wanted to add our next encounter to the team, Wo Chen. But this thing was too high a level to handle, and ultimately, I had to abandon the grassy slug. Okay, so with that failed attempt, I was ready to take my frustrations out on Kofu and his Pokemon. He starts with a pathetic Pokemon, Love Disc, which is put out of its misery with a Seed Bomb from Tom. Slowbro is much bulkier to deal with, but so far it's nothing Tom can't handle. Now it's his ace, Palkia. Wait, Palkia? So Kofi just casually uses the legendary Pokemon that controls space itself, huh? Hoping it doesn't go for a water move, I hard switch into Reptar, who thankfully can eat a slam. Reptar terrestrializes to lose its water weakness while also coming in clutch as Palkia misses its Crab Hammer. A Thunder Fang brings its legendary Pokemon below half, giving us momentum. On the next turn, a Crab Hammer hits and does insane damage, but we hold on and we take one more electrical chomp at the legendary space Pokemon, taking it out. That was kinda nuts, but we get the win and also the gym badge from Kofu. Once again, it's Team Star who needs to be taught a lesson, but before I pay them a visit, we have another encounter we can add, Ting Lu. And this stupid moose looking Pokemon just refused to stay in the ball. So that's two encounters in a row that I've missed out on. Right, so quickly, I've added a layout with some info on the run. Do you guys prefer this? Let me know in the comments below so I know what to do in future videos. Atticus and his poison Pokemon are now our next target. He starts to fight with a, a, um, excuse me. He has a damn Eternatus in his team. Eternatus goes for a Toxic, badly poisoning Reptar, while we respond with an Ice Fang, doing about one third of damage. A Venishot comes our way, and although it's not very effective, I am on a timer due to Toxic. Another Ice Fang brings it down to the orange, and we're looking okay. We trade blows one more time, and after taking it out, we survive on 5 HP because of the Toxic damage. Now it's Salazzle, and Nemo has no trouble coming in and taking out the Lizard with Paybacks. Toxapoke is the next Pokemon, so Jack comes in using Salt Cure and Rock Tombs to slowly take it out. Finally, it's a Starmobile, and well, things 
don't go to plan. Right off the bat, it goes for a spin out doing good damage while I miss my rock tomb. Another spin out gets me below health while a terrestrialized rock tomb barely puts a dent on the car. On top of that, all my healthy Pokemon are weak to spin out. Not wanting Jack to die, Slushy comes in and chips away at the Starmobile with a couple of ice shards before becoming our first death. Sorry, Slushy. Fangs comes in and gets the Starmobile low with a couple of paybacks, but also has to be sacrificed, going down to a couple of spin outs. Making sure their sacrifices weren't in vain, Nemo comes in and can put an end to this bloodbath with a couple of incinerates. The poison base is taken out, but at the cost of two of my Pokemon. Desperately needing some more teammates before we take on Larry, we find an Aspartha at the end of the bridge and we add it to the team. And finally, everyone's favorite gym leader, Larry, is next. The businessman leads with a Hisuian Braviary and I have my fish Nemo out. We start off with a Nasty Pot, doubling our special attack, while Bravery goes for a yawn, making us drowsy. I get a little greedy, going for another Nasty Pot, while Larry's Braviary hits me with a slam, not doing much, especially after leftovers. We do fall asleep, however the plan is to stay in and keep going for Dark Pulses as we eat the hits well. Nemo finally wakes up, sending Braviary to the afterlife with a super effective snarl. Litleo jumps in, but yeah, it, it was never going to do anything to us. Finally, his ace is out, and ironically, it's a Komala. One incinerate from my little fish is all it takes to finish off the koala and get us the win. Larry's a man of honor, handing over the gym badge as promised. Oh great, it's Nimona again. She really doesn't give up, does she? Nemo can set up with Nazi plots on her Sprigatito while eating some Accela rocks. We then burn the Grass Cat to a crisp with an incinerate. Nimona then shows us that she has a combined total of two brain cells as she brings in a Dartrix who has no hope of even touching Nemo. Now it's Gudra and this thick boy can actually survive a plus four stab snarl from Nemo while responding with a Thunder Wave, paralyzing my fish. Reptile switches in, eating a spark from the slimy dragon before a super effective Ice Fang takes it out. Finally, her ace comes out and it's, uh, oh, it's a, a slack off. Well, thanks for trying, Nimona. Hey, Nemo, you see that Giratina? Can you please take it out for me, bud? Thank you. Our next stop is to take on Rhyme, who lives in the snowy mountaintops. Along the way, we run into an Iron Jugglers, which is actually perfect for a ghost user. Then, I kid you not, not even three minutes later, just outside the town, we run into a shiny one. And because this is my run, I make my own rules, so I catch the shiny version and throw the other one in the trash. Now this is where some miscalculations throw a spanner in the works. You see, I got the Pokemon I wanted to use against Rhyme up to the level cap of 42, completely forgetting that we have three double battles to do first. So although Reptar and Tom were both level 42 at the start of the gym challenge, by the end of it, they both over leveled, meaning I can't use them. We also have one more encounter available to us before we get to pick apart Rhyme's Pokemon. And this time we get ourselves an Iron Valiant, which is one of my new favorite Pokemon. Hey guys, just a quick warning. Uh, as I was editing the video, I noticed that the trees in this fight were going a little bit crazy. So if you're someone that's got epilepsy, uh, I'd advise you skip this fight and I'll probably put a timestamp on the video so you know where to uh, skip it. Okay, all right, sorry about that. Back to the video. We head back to the village where Rhyme is waiting. She starts off strong with a Poltegeist and a Hooper, but so do I with Chief and Lucky Boy. Chief lands the first blow on the teapot with a Night Slash, almost taking it out. Lucky Boy then finishes off the job with a Snarl, while bringing Hooper below half health. Icy Wind hits Chief, but Lucky Boy truly is lucky as it dodges the attack. Rhyme then casually brings out an Origin Form Giratina. The crowd then boosts our attack and special attack, meaning Lucky Boy can finish off the Hooper and deal massive damage to the Giratina with a Snarl. Giratina then hits Lucky Boy with a Play Rough, which hurts before Chief can send it back to hell with a dazzling gleam. Last is a Ghost Terror, a Bolivar, which Lucky Boy and Chief can take out with a Snarl and a Night Slash. Rhyme is beaten, and of course, we get a Gym Badge. The Quaking Earth Titan now needs to be taught a lesson, and well, Tom just terrestrializes and sends this thing packing with a couple of flower tricks in both phases. It's another Titan beaten, and we're one step closer to healing Robostiff. Now we have Tulip next up, but of course, Nimona can't resist the urge to battle us first. Serena is Firefang twice, and then dead. Greninja is destroyed by Stab, Terra, Thunderfang. Hydreigon then stands no chance against a quad effective Dazzling Gleam from Chief, and finally, her Abomba Snow terrestrializes into a Fire type and takes big damage from a low kick. It responds with a Torch Song and... Okay, that, that was close. But another low kick kills and Nimona is beaten again. Now I decide to look for another encounter as I'm getting everyone to the level cap. And we come across an Iron Hands. Um, 
Yeah, that was a misclick. That's my bad, Jacked. Thankfully, we do catch it to make up for the death, and I make sure to give it a fitting name. I craft the perfect team, and then we head to take on Tulip. Tom leads, and of course, she has a psychic type that isn't weak to dark moves. We hone claws, raising our attack, while her Gallade sets up a reflect. Tom goes for one more hone claws, while Gallade hits us with a crunch that tickles. We rinse and repeat one more time, getting to plus three, and now we can begin to attack. Flower Trick is the obvious move, as this will always crit, meaning the reflect won't matter, getting the kill. Yuxi comes in, and I know this thing is a legendary Pokemon, but to survive a plus three, critical hit, stab, Flower Trick is kind of insane. Thankfully, the Dazzling Gling doesn't kill, and we follow up with one more hit, taking it out. Reflect is now down, meaning Gothitelle has no chance surviving a super effective Night Slash. Her ace is Maddie Chan, which honestly works well, as she seems to have a couple of them as bodyguards at the back. Too bad it becomes a pure psychic type, meaning one night slash from Tom is all it takes to send this Pokemon straight back to Tilip. She hands over the badge, and we only have one gym left. We head back to the Snowy Mountains, take her riding for a slide through some flags, before eventually being able to face off against Grusha and his Pokemon. He leads with a Frostmoth. Wait. Frostmoth? That's literally the lead he does in the normal games. I have Flipper, who up until this point I've barely used. Flipper Flip turns out of here, activating his zero to hero ability, bringing in Nemo. Flipper then comes back out, taking out his Frostmoth with a couple of drain punches. Tinkerton is next, which is good as the team is actually randomized. It's also good as a few more draining punches gets the kill. Now it's Glalie, who does survive a drain punch, but a second one finishes the job. Finally, it's the ace Weavile, but a drain punch followed up with a priority jet punch gets the kill on Grusha's ace. Grusha then hands over the last gym badge and we can take on the elite four. Well, not quite. We do have a few more fights left. Ortega is the next target, but before we take him on, we can add a flutter main to the team. Uh, uh, okay, maybe not then. Ortega comes out ready to fight, and of course, he leads with an Enamorous. Flipper Flip turns out of there, and Flap comes in, taking a huge critical hit play rough. Unfortunately, Flaps must be sacrificed, as I need a clean switch into Flipper. Flap then lands a big Lumina crash on Enamorous, before ultimately going down to a second play rough. Flipper returns into his hero form, and he ain't happy. We bulk up a few times with the Dolphin, and then he goes berserk. Enamorous, dead. Tinkerton, dead. Sylveon, dead. Even the Starmobile can barely touch us as Flipper uses a few jet punches, turning it into scrap metal. Ortega admits he has lost, and now we only have one member left. Also, as the level cap has increased, Godzilla can finally evolve into this region's pseudo-legendary, Baxcalibur. Right, so we are up to the final Titan Pokemon, the False Dragon. This is actually a very simple victory, as Tom can overpower the Dodonzo in both forms with Flower Tricks. Then Chief can slide in, terrestrialize, and take out the Tatsugiri with a few dazzling gleams. Ivan gets his last herb, while also giving us his final badge for the run. Also, Mabostov is now completely healed, which makes me very happy. There's one more encounter we can get before I can fight Eerie, and it turns out to be a Bramblin. Okay, scratch that. Let's go to Eerie. We get face to face with the final Team Star boss, and she leads with an Annihilate. I have Chief terrestrialize and deliver a huge Moon Blast on the poor monkey, absolutely destroying it. Hariyama is brought out next, and just like the monkey before it, one Moon Blast is all it takes. Now it's a Brute Bonnet, and for some reason I went for a Drain Punch, which doesn't get the kill. Thankfully, an Ice Punch does minimal damage, and a second Drain Punch squishes this mushroom. Halucha comes in, but leaves just as quickly after a Moon Blast from Chief. Finally, it's the Starmobile, and all it takes is two Moon Blasts to put an end to this car and beating Eerie. She agrees to shut shop and gives me the final badge of the game. With all the side content completed, we now have the Elite Four to take care of. Rika makes us take a quiz with her before eventually agreeing to take us on. She leaves with Crocodile, which is actually one of my favorite ground types. Flipper Flip turns out of there and brings in Lucky Boy, expecting a ground move, which happens. Flipper comes back in, only to laugh at the pathetic damage a blizzard does to us. We safely set up two bulk ups on Rika's Crocodile, doubling our attack and defense. Then we land a Drain Punch, taking it out and completely healing us. Garchomp is a scary Pokemon, and it even survives a Jet Punch. But our defense is doubled, and an Earthquake can barely touch us, which means it goes down on the next turn. Rika's last three Pokemon are Camerupt, Sanaconda, and an Alolan Dug Trio, who all go down one by one from a Jet Punch. Rika ain't happy, but we get the first win. Next up is Poppy, who is literally a toddler by the way. Poppy leads with Copperaja, which is actually the same as the vanilla game. Do you know what else happens in the vanilla game? A clean sweep on Poppy. <laughs> Fan 
favorite Larry is back for a rematch, and funny enough, he leads with a regular Braviary and not the Hisuian version for this fight. Braviary goes for a sunny day, which just doesn't make sense before Reptar finishes off the bird with a big Thunderfang. Now he brings in Scissor, and while well, a sun boosted, quad effective Firefang was probably enough to kill this thing twice. Larry then starts to make me question his involvement as an Elite Four member, as he switches into Pelipper, knowing full well I have a quad effective Thunderfang at my disposal. Clawf is next, and I switch in Chief, who almost takes it out with a single drain punch. The stupid crab then confuses Chief, and not wanting to deal with RNG, I switch Reptar back in and take it out with an Ice Fang. Larry's iconic Raptor ends up being his ace, although Raptor comes out on top after a huge Terrestrialize, super effective Thunder Fang. Hassle is the last line of defense before I can get my hands on the champion Gita. I simply let Chief off the leash, and we'll just watch. <laughs> To be fair, Hassel has a great team, but Chief was the ultimate counter. Finally, after smashing our way through these duds, we can finally head outside to take on Gita. The champion leads with a Blissey, and I flip a flip turn out of there straight away. We bring in Lucky Boy, while Blissey sets up a Reflect. Wasting no time, I bring Flipper back in, this time in his hero form, eating a dazzling gleam on the switch. Here, Flipper can safely set up three bulk ups on a Blissey before smashing it with a Drain Punch, taking it out, and healing ourselves completely. Azumarill comes in, and this thing actually matches up well against Flipper. Regardless, two jet punches is still too much for it, getting the kill. And honestly, after that, well, the battle kinda went like this. Yeah, I know, anticlimactic for a champion battle. Thankfully, this isn't the final battle of the game. Arvin is waiting for us at the lighthouse and wants to test our strength. Also, I want to show Godzilla some love, so I let him lead and I start dragon dancing in front of his houndstone. After two of them, Godzilla has doubled his speed and attack, allowing him to sweep through Arvin's team. We dragon claw the houndstone, earthquake the Magurna, ice fang the Dolliv, dragon claw the Volcarona, ice fang the Vivalon, and finally, Dragon Claw his Terrestrialize and Teleon. Thanks for the warm up, Arvin. Now it's Director Clavel who stands between me and Penny, so I have no choice but to teach him and his Pokemon a lesson. Godzilla takes a lead against his Polysand, and I go for a similar strat with Dragon Dancing, but I completely forgot about Foul Play dealing damage based on your attack stat and not the Pokemon using it. Chief comes in and does decent damage with a couple of Night Slashes. I am put to sleep with Yawns, but I plan on staying in, hoping to wake up until. Ye yeah. Third time's a charm as Nima comes in and finally puts an end to this pile of sand with a couple of dark pulses. Of course, he has the perfect counter, bringing in Iron Bundle. At this point, I decide to bring in the big guns, Reptar. We terrestrialize our Paradox Pokemon and a single Thunderfang sends it straight back to Clavel. A Bolivia comes in, but I do a quick swap in and out to bring Flipper in the battlefield in his hero form. A Drain Punch is just short from the kill and I almost get immediately punished as the Olive Branch does huge damage with a wood hammer, but also takes itself out with recoil. Clevel then starts to get serious by switching in an origin form Palkia. I take a risk switching in Lucky Boy who can eat a sludge bomb. Palkia then follows up with a fire blast, bringing me low while a dragon breath kind of just does okay damage. Reptor comes in taking a big fire blast, but still has enough HP to survive one more as he takes it before dealing big damage with a Thunder Fang. Now it's Nemo who tags in, and this little fish can eat a Dark Pulse, then a Sludge Bomb, before taking out this cursed monster with its own Dark Pulse. Just when I thought I could breathe, Director Clavel brings in Internatus. Thankfully, Shadow Balls do pitiful damage while it goes down to a few Dark Pulses. His final Pokemon is also Inteleon, but this one terrestrializes into a Grass type, so a single Lava Plume finishes it off. With Director Clavel beaten, we can finally face a big boss of Team Star, Penny. Okay, so thankfully, this time my Dragon Dance strat with Godzilla actually goes to plan, and we can plow through her team. Godzilla can take out every single one of her Pokemon with no issues, which is actually kind of a relief, especially as the last battle we had was kind of stressful in comparison. Penny's defeated, and there's one person left, Nimona. This is the final battle with our true rival, one that will go down in history. Well, so I thought. In reality, Godzilla sets up with Dragon Dancers, and then, um, this happens.
at least she's happy about it. With all that done, we have one thing left to do. That's to head down to Area Zero and help save Arvin's mum from her lab. Nimona and Penny both agree to join us and we head down to the Forbidden Area. Well, I think it's forbidden. I mean, flying taxis will come down here at a drop of a hat, so it really can't be that strict. But enough of that, we enter the lab only to find that Professor Sada is actually a robot. Furthermore, she wants us to destroy a time machine, but warns us in order to do so, we need to beat her in a battle first. We decide to continue, and at this point, she has lost all control. She drops her first Master Ball and wastes no time bringing in a Spectre. Flipper wants none of that, as we flip turn out of there, bringing in Chief, who consumes her booster energy, raising her attack. As we switch in, we take decent damage from her Zen Headbutt, but we stay in and we take out her horse with a single Night Slash. Reverum is next to drop in, but a couple of Drain Punches take out the car while keeping us relatively healthy. Next is a... 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 a Dolive. Okay, uh, yeah. Bye. Now it's a Crabominal, but a Drain Punch is too much for this crab as it falls in a single hit. Corviknight is a little trickier to deal with, but we can eat its Thunderbolt and take it out with Drain Punches and a Night Slash to save PP. Her ace is Charkadet, which is disappointing as a single Drain Punch gets the kill and finishes off Professor Sada. She actually has one more Pokemon up her sleeve and it's a, a, a Gallade, huh? I love how this thing looks in the cutscene. Although regardless, Plot Armor guarantees the win in this fight, saving the day. Thank you for watching guys, I'll see you next time.